There's a phenomenon I've been noticing all around the internet. Folks who started out as Christian fundamentalist, Christian ministries suddenly turning, or maybe not sudden, but becoming influencers. And not just influencers, but social media gurus. They're creating an online presence that's not just Jesus-centered, but is also branded-centered. It's a branding built around themselves, their content, with a dash of their faith. It's almost jarring to witness. Social media accounts that built their brand as a ministry becoming influence-based. As a former fundee, I wanted to break down what is behind this rise. Why are former fundees and current fundamentalists becoming influencers? I should say, my name is Elizabeth. You're watching That Liz Hunter. So let's jump in. So who are these influencers? Let's talk about what I think makes a fundamentalist turned content creator. First, these kind of influencers have an extreme Christian aesthetic. You'll know it when you see it. Everything is focused on Jesus in some form or another. There's definitely a Bible verse in their bio, but not only that, their content always leads back to some sort of Christian base, whether it's a caption, an image that points to Jesus, you know that their actual focus is their Christianity and it's going to pin back to that. But it is not so Christian that the average person wouldn't see it. So if you're not raised in the church, you might not know that some of the lingo and descriptions that they use about their life are based in fundamentalist Christianity because you wouldn't know that lingo. But if you've been raised in fundamentalism, you can read it like a dictionary and you know what they're saying in their captions, their Instagram stories, the things they reference are referencing fundamentalism, but it's a code and it is definitely coded. And if you were not raised in fundamentalism, you wouldn't know that code. Another hallmark, they are financially independent and they're lacing their financial independence with nuggets from Dave Ramsey. And if you've been raised on Dave Ramsey, you'll spot it a mile away. They rarely mention going into debt and when they do, it's not something that they're gonna talk about in any sort of positive mindset. They're going to highlight that they're working from home, that they're earning their own income, that they're financially independent, and that you can be that way too. So a Christian influencer is, a Christian social media guru is going to highlight working from home and being financially independent as part of their brand. Another hallmark, if they've done wrong online, if they've scammed people, if they've hurt others, they're going to cover up that wrongdoing by mentioning their Christianity. They're going to say they've been forgiven by Jesus and so therefore the internet should forgive them too. They're gonna be anti-cancel culture to an extreme, but they're gonna be the first one to cancel Disney for gay people. They're going to um, be uncancelable themselves, but have no problem letting people know that they boycott businesses that don't agree with their own personal religious beliefs. If you dare to bring up a wrong that they've done, they're going to ask why you're bringing that up when they've been forgiven by Jesus. They cannot be cancelled by their misdoings because everything is forgiven in their mind. Another hallmark is you will rarely see these influencers bring up social justice-driven causes involved in politics, except if it's pro-life. Pro-life is the big exception because pro-life is a hallmark of fundamentalism. Other social-driven justice causes like the Black Lives Matter movement or, you know, denouncing Asian hate and Asian hate crimes or even, you know, eco-friendly causes like saving the planet and fighting gun violence in our schools and gun violence in general, they're rarely going to bring up those causes and it won't it won't be something that they even share as a social media graphic to their Instagram story. If it is, I would be absolutely surprised that they would care enough to share it. Now, another issue that they will brush over and that you'll have to listen out for is them addressing LGBTQ plus issues. If they address LGBTQ plus issues, they would never say, we don't believe in the right for gay people to marry or that gay people should have to go to conversion therapy. It's simply going to be, we love them, but we don't agree with their lifestyle. They're not going to make a political statement in their mind because they don't want to offend. If you are a former fundamentalist like myself and you are LGBTQ, you'll recognize their love of the sinner hate the sin is actually violence couched in Christian language. So that's how you spot a former fundamentalist, current fundamentalist turned Christian influencer. Now I'm gonna describe why I think they want to become influencers. Why are 
Christian fundamentalists turning to content creation. Fun days may look confusing, but it all goes back to theology. If they act a certain way online or in real life, you can pinpoint their ideology and what is driving their motivation. And while influencing on social media may look like fun, it is actual work. And where there's work, fundies see themselves thriving. The secular vocations of Christians are a war zone. There are our spiritual adversaries to be defeated. That is, evil spirits and sins, not people. And there is beautiful moral high ground to be gained for the glory of God. You don't waste your life by where you work, but how and why. I call this Christianized capitalism. I don't know if that's an actual phrase. I just literally made it up as I was writing it because to me, Christianized capitalism is fundy work culture. They view work as a war zone that they need to conquer and create their own little kingdom in. Work is a method to serve Christ. Therefore, capitalism is a tool and tools are neither morally good nor morally bad and therefore it's a tool they can use for their kingdom building. I'm using fundy language that may be super confusing, but kingdom building is simply proselytizing, convincing other people to become Christians and dominion over the earth. Dominion over the earth means that every aspect of your life comes under the control of Jesus. So that includes your marriage, it includes your lifestyle, it includes your work, your religion, your habits, everything comes under the dominion of Jesus. And for many fundalists, let's see if I can say this right. For many fundamentalists, everything in life is supposed to be in the dominion of Christ. That includes their jobs, uh, it includes politics and the nation, it includes all of us. They feel that all of us should be under the dominion of Jesus and therefore they strive to create a Christ-centered life on earth in order to emulate and be like Jesus. So fundies don't view social media as just an audience and friends. They view them as people they need to convert and convince to live like themselves. Social media is a form of proselytization for fundamentalisms as well as a war zone for them to win. I want to be a hand-picked, set-apart, modern-day Esther, a daughter of the king. I don't want to place my hope in the fickle ways of this world, hustling to climb a ladder that leads nowhere fast. I want the boldness in my voice to make all of hell shake and stand rooted in my faith, no matter what sacrifice that takes. I want to care for my body for the temple that it is, not flaunt it off to others like, see what I did? I want to post with purpose, not for likes or gratification. I want to be a hand for the helpless and a voice for the voiceless. I want to love people for who they are and all their brokenness. I want to walk in authority, leading those around me to the foot of the cross. I want to recognize my calling, operate in my gifts, and walk unapologetically for the kingdom. I want to be a woman of God who knows her confidence comes from Him alone. Because when a woman of God is placed with this position to live out his mission, she will know that she was born for a time such as this. Now, fundies are not stupid. <laughs> they know if they're overtly Christian online, if they're overtly anti-gay, if they're overtly offensive in their Christianity, that they're going to turn off the audience that they want to proselytize. So instead, they turn to content that might not be overtly Christian, whether that is social media, management style content like how to be a social media influencer whether that is you know how to have a great marriage kind of content whether that is lifestyle content that includes a lot of topics that many people are interested in like healthy eating healthy exercising you know marriage and becoming a mother and motherhood in general all of that content can be laced with christianity without being overtly christian now, I believe in my mind, fundies have been good at this for ages. They've been good at taking non-overtly Christian things and turning them into a mission field for proselytization. The idea that comes straight to mind and how they do this is MLMs. Every fundy I knew growing up was involved in some sort of MLM. Now that is a broad sweep of it, maybe not everyone, but most of the moms I knew were involved in an MLM, whether that was selling Tupperware, selling Mary Kay, selling nail things that slid on your nails. All of those things were MLMs and they were the dominion of Fundy Moms. They could have house parties and invite folks over and then that was a great way to socialize but also proselytize 
And it was an easy way for a mom to still work from home, fulfilling her mission as a fundy mother, and also create income while proselytizing. I think MLMs are going by the wayside in many ways. I don't see many people still sticking to MLMs. If you do scroll through Facebook, you'll see a few house parties that they're holding that they invite people on their Facebook feed. But most of us are not really interested in engaging in MLM culture. I think the vast majority of Americans and people in general have like moved away from falling for MLMs. But I think social media influencing is an easy way to replace MLMs. It's got affiliate marketing, which is very similar to MLMs. It has a, a way to earn income. It has the social engagement of an MLM house party, and it allows them to create income while staying working from home. And I think MLMs and social media content have been switched by fundies as a way for them to, by fundy women especially, as a way for them to create an audience, create a marketing scheme, while also retaining their fundy beliefs and proselytizing those beliefs to those outside of their day-to-day -day circle. All of that said, I think fundies did this accidentally. I don't think any fundy sat down and was like, I'm gonna become an influencer in order to proselytize. I think it naturally fits into their day-to-day -day lifestyle. It naturally fits into their mission and it's not it's not sneaky. It's not something that they're hiding. They're very overtly doing this, but many of us aren't aware because we weren't, we didn't grow up in fundamentalism. Fundies, fundamentalism, <laughs> can't say that word. So many people just end up creating snark threads, end up making fun of them. You got the Cody Co's, you know, making fun of the Bethany Beals and Girl Defined. And that's fine. It's funny. It's great entertainment, but I think we could go a little deeper and figure out why they're doing it and how to pick that apart. So why are fundies so good at becoming social media marketers? Like why is content creating so, why does it fit so well into their worldview? Girls in fundy culture have one purpose, to be a helpmate. No one sums up that purpose better than Debbie Parle. If you're a wife, you were created to fill a need, and in that capacity, you are a good thing. A helper suited to the needs of a man. This is how God created you, and it is your purpose for existing. You are by nature equipped in every way to be your man's helper. You are inferior to none as long as you function within your created nature. For no man can do your job, and no man is complete without his wife. You were created to make him complete, not to seek personal fulfillment parallel to him. Created to be a helpmeet was the gold standard when I was a teen. It made people uncomfortable, but it also created conversations. And while it was uncomfortable to read and it seemed harsh at times, people didn't really disagree with the ideology. They disagreed with how it was delivered. My mother, for example, thought Debbie Pearl was too proud and shouldn't have written books, but that didn't mean she disagreed with what Debbie Pearl taught. She kept Created to be a helpmeet by her bedside and would read it occasionally and also lecture her children from it. Debbie Pearl took everything that floated around in the atmosphere of fundamentalism and distilled it into an easy to read Bible study kind of book. And it reinforced a lot of ideology that was drilled into us from a young age. Being a helpmeet isn't just an idea, it's a lifestyle. There are consequences for young girls discovering who they are and what they're meant to be and being drilled into them that they are supposed to be a helpmate. As a teen, I was told your role is either to serve your dad or to serve your future husband. And therefore everything you decide, every choice you make, every class you take should be going back to that question. Will this make me a future helpmate? Is, will this make me an adequate helpmate? In what way is this helping me serve my future husband as a wife and mother? The Botkin sisters are one role model that, meant, that were held up for many fundies. Um, and I don't even, I think they're, they're still out there. They're still making content, um, but their entire business centered on how to help us become a helpmeet. And I remember watching Return of the Daughters as a teenager and being very uncomfortable with it, but also I did not have the language of the vocabulary or the knowledge to understand why it bothered me. My fellow fundy friends in fundamentalism we all learned how to be helpmates. Many of the Fundy families around me own small businesses. And therefore, being a teenager with a dad who owned a small business, as a teenage girl, you fit naturally into that helpmate role. I knew teenage girls who helped manage their dad's 
you know, accounting books, who helped market the business, who worked directly with customers and who did manual labor for that business. But it wasn't just in jobs and labor that you learned to be a helpmate. It was also in how you fit into your household. So many older daughters in fundamentalism became miniature mothers. We learned how to manage our younger siblings, manage a household, cook and clean and create budgets. Not only were we managing our younger siblings and becoming suedo parents, but many girls had this weird dynamic of also being responsible for our father's emotions and reactions to us. So many times the way we were dressed, the way we spoke, it was you are causing your dad an emotional reaction and you are responsible to manage his emotions and that fit perfectly well into the future. You are a wife and mother and therefore you're supposed to manage your husband's emotions. Girls had one role and that was to be a helper, to be a conduit for someone else to thrive and everything in your life centered around that. And I believe social media, especially content creating, is a really well-made tool for these girls who are trained this way to continue doing that as an adult. Christian influencers, or fundy influencers, I should say, easily style themselves as experts in their field and therefore you can they can market their skills for an audience. And most fundy girls are always taught that your skills are not for you, they're for the people around you, they're to serve others. And therefore, content creating, I think, has become a way for them to continue service-minded work while not dissecting the fact that they aren't supposed to be a helpmate, that they that your role in life is not to be a helpmate. Even if they no longer believe in the created to be a helpmate gold standard of fundamentalism, that mindset of you are of service to others and that is your role continues to bleed into their social media. They're trained to be an expert to serve others and that expertise training leads into what they end up doing as influencers, as content creators, and there's it's also incredibly limiting if you don't have a full education, if you don't have the life training and how to work for yourself instead of for others, you fall back into habits that limit what you can actually do. All of that leads to my next point in that there's genuinely a lack of skills that most fundies have in order to work. I don't mean to be harsh, but I am gonna be harsh. I'm gonna be brutally honest here <laughs> in my opinion. This is all my opinion, y'all. Not fact, but I think it is. Anyway, I wouldn't say if I didn't believe it, but most former fundies don't have the necessary life skills in order to work a full-time job anywhere. They just don't have it. There are things that you need in order to get hired. So let's, let's list some of those things. You would need a diploma somewhere. <laughs> You would need a resume, you would need job skills and life experience, and you do need, as much as people don't want to acknowledge this, you do need social skills. And those are not things that are given to fundy girls. They're specifically not given to them because they're taught they will not need them. Am I saying fundy girls don't deserve to have a job? Absolutely not. I blame fundamentalism for handicapping them in this way, but it is hard for fundamentalist girls to find jobs to be able to land on their own two feet once they leave. And even once they're, even if they're still in it, even if they haven't you know, deconstructed, it can still be hard to find a regular job that most people want that has full-time pay, full-time benefits, and that you work 40 hours a week. And most fundies though are not gonna acknowledge this. Most fundamentalists instead become their own boss, they say, and end up bragging about how much they don't need what most of us would consider basic life skills. Are you cut out to be an entrepreneur? Let's find out together. An entrepreneur is literally just someone who organizes a business or businesses and as a result takes on a greater financial risk because there isn't anyone above them. Like they are the person, you are the woman, you are taking all the risk for that company, you are, you're the top, you're the head, you're leading it. An entrepreneur also recognizes that it's not this like straight journey. When you work a nine to five, it's often that way because the boss, the people ahead of you, the owners, they're the ones that are taking the risk. They're the ones that are, you know, at financial risk. They're the ones that are dreaming big. They're the ones that ultimately will lose or gain a lot based on how the company does. 
So being an entrepreneur means you are that person at the top. And so your journey is going to look a lot more like, a, you know, a graph like this, like <laughs> kind of like a climb to a mountain. There's going to be some ups and some downs. There's going to be some really like amazing moments. There's going to be some difficult moments and you recognize that and you're in it for the long haul. You're not going to give up when you have that first hard like fall, that first hard difficulty. You're like, I see the top of the mountain and that's where I'm going, even if there's some difficulty. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you also need to have an idea, something that you are an expert in, something that you are passionate about, something that you believe in, and something that other people are interested and would be willing to pay for. To be an entrepreneur, you got to have some motivation and some diligence because <laughs> you don't have a boss telling you what to do. So you got to have some self-discipline. And if you got that, you can make it. They want to brag that they don't need a diploma. They want to brag that they don't need these classes, um, that they are their own boss, that they're completely right, and that all of us who encourage people to seek outside education are simply wrong and are going into debt and doing foolish you know, decisions in order to benefit our future. The fundies don't realize that they're stuck because they won't try any job that requires those kind of skills. They won't go out and push themselves to work somewhere that requires trained um, discipline and social interaction and focus. It is hard to work 40 hours a week if you grew up being able to do whatever you want to do as long as it was serving Jesus and your future husband. It is hard to figure out how to work for someone else. Um, working. If you've spent your entire life staying at home, spending a few hours a day being a suedo mom and serving your dad and not following another person's discipline need, like not following other people's directions and figuring out how to um, use an education to, your, to the benefit of a workforce, it is incredibly hard to take like having none of those skills and then having to go out into the world and sell yourself on a resume. You don't even know how to put together a resume. And if you put it together, it obviously would read terribly. Like you just have to read some of these Instagram captions from these influencers to realize they do not know how to write because they spent their life reading the letters of the Apostle Paul. And so they write as though they are a translator in 1619 reading, writing the King James Bible and not someone from 2020 writing a resume. I say that because I used to write like that. I used to write horrendously long semicolons, commas, dashes, and stringing together a zillion thoughts and writing it like I was the Apostle Paul because that is the writing that I grew up reading every day. So, my theory is they don't have the skills to get a regular job, so they turn to self-proclaimed entrepreneurship. It's not that different, in my mind, than an MLM. Yes, you're out financial funds if you close it, if it fails, but it's not a business. It's not that different from selling Mary Kay or selling Tupperware. There's not that great a risk and neither is there that great a reward. Don't have to leave their culture in order to create these self-made businesses. And if you're not leaving your culture outside of their fundy culture, their business cannot thrive. And if your business cannot thrive outside of a home culture that you've created and that you live in and that you refuse to leave, then it's not truly entrepreneurship, in my opinion. Social media allows fundies the opportunity to develop an audience, market themselves, and create products all without ever leaving their culture. I don't see how that is entrepreneurship, in my opinion. I feel like that was super harsh and probably super wrong. I'm just gonna be honest, I'm not an entrepreneur, so, but I'm super judgy of self-made entrepreneurs who I do not see creating products and business that stands on its own. Also, is ministry entrepreneurship. They don't, I don't think they would say it is, but yeah, anyway. Anyway, let's move on. So in conclusion, that's literally what I wrote down in my script. So in conclusion, let's conclude this video. Is there anything wrong with Christian influencers other than the crime of cringe? Because let's face it, they're cringy. And then to my life and I have to compromise? You must think about that one again. <laughs> like all of us to be as cringy as they want online to say what they want online to create as they want online so you can't say they're doing anything wrong 
Except these influencers aren't just showcasing their lifestyle. It's dominionism. They believe their life is the only right one to exist in America, and many of them don't believe that you and I should have the same rights as everyone else. Their dogma is actively causing harm. And it shows up. It really shows up. You have Paul and Morgan having Lila Rose promoting life action lies, like literal lies that say that a 10 year old should be forced to carry a pregnancy to full term. That's influencing, but it's also harming people. You have scammers scamming people out of their hard earned money in a time when the price of everything is a zillion times higher. Um, inflation is hurting all of us and they're scamming people out of money to give them expert advice that is not expert advice that they can find for free online and is not truly helping anyone. You also have scammers ripping people off, you know, donate to GoFundMe's, donate to this ministry, donate, donate, donate. But those donations are truly not being used in the way that they have been promised. So while we all have freedom of speech, we all have the right to be an influencer and to create content. No one is the right, no one, no one, absolutely no one has the right to be free of criticism. No one has the right to be above the law and to create content without, you know, letting us know if it's paid sponsorships. No one has the right to be a scammer without consequences. No one has the right to propagate harmful religious beliefs without being called out. Anyway, I'm just super proud. I am super proud of communities online that call these folks out. You have Fendi Fridays. I love them. I love their content and I love how they highlight the hypocrisy, the harm and the danger of these creators. I like fun these snark reddit communities they can be frustrating but fun frustrating because how are these people getting so many followers doing so much harm i just don't think most people realize how harmful that their content really is anyway well we can't stop them from creating we can call out the actual harm that is happening online and that is my that is my video so thanks for watching i had a lot of fun writing this late at night script. I rarely r film the scripted video, just not a scripted person in general. But anyway, I had a lot of fun writing it. I hope you I hope you liked it <laughs> and let me know what you think of my thoughts on content creating and fundamentalism. This video is not sponsored by anyone but my Patreon. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons because they support me in so many different ways. We have a great community over there on Patreon. We're constantly growing and building. We're going to have an August book club, so be sure to check out my Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and you get all sorts of cool perks, live streams, book clubs, all sorts of fun things. And I will see y'all all around the internet. Thanks for watching. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I should say it differently. See ya later. See ya. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service.